I'm Stanley Kramer, and I'm on location on a film in Italy. But I did want to take time out to introduce to you one of the most extraordinary, remarkable pieces of film I've ever seen. This is not film in the true sense, in that actors and actresses are not involved, no rehearsals, really shot pretty much off the cuff. A group of people, completely unknown to each other, sit around in a circle and trade truths. I think you'll find the results extraordinary and really remarkable. <laughs> there isn't enough time to show what went on with all of the group members during the 16 hours that they met. So what you'll see here are just a few of the things that happened to four of these people. A few highlights. The question they examine is, what is it like to be oneself? What are other people like when they are themselves? All of us are pretty good at carrying the secret of our own loneliness. Now these people will try to discover the secret of being together. If you find yourself feeling like a peeping Tom while you watch this, as though you're watching something you're not supposed to see, I want to assure you that the people not only agreed to be photographed, but are eager to share these aspects of their lives in hope you might learn more about others and thereby about yourselves. Two psychologists from Western Behavioral Sciences Institute of La Jolla, California are with this group. They are Carl Rogers and Richard Farson. Carl Rogers breaks the ice. Well, I'm glad we all had a chance to have dinner together because that gave us a little chance to get acquainted, at least with a few of us. But uh, I feel as though really, we really are strangers to each other in spite of that. There's lots of geographical distance and occupational distance and everything. And I feel like saying this one or two things to start with, uh, from my point of view. One is that uh, this is our group. We really can make of it anything we want to make of it. And um, I think that uh, it is an opportunity to be in the group as fully as we can. Maybe in some respects to try ways of being or ways of relating to each other that we may never quite have had nerve enough to try before, where in an ordinary life situation it just seems like it's too, uh, too impossible. I feel a lot of anticipation about this group. I really look forward to getting to know you. And at the same time, I'm apprehensive, and I don't think it has much to do with the lights and the cameras. I think I'm always a little apprehensive in not knowing what a given group is going to be like. I, I don't know who we are, how we're going to get along, whether anything's going to come of this. Um, so I feel a very double feeling. I feel excited and full of anticipation, and I feel uh, a little on the scared side, too. I'm sure there's some psychological pattern or something that a person that puts um, great um, importance or can give to a dog or an animal, there's something that relates some way in the person, But I, and I'm curious because this is an important part of my life, this cat, and I don't know whether I'm trans giving my this affection and love to the cat because I can't give it to my husband or because uh, it was um, um, its children. 
I, I feel like it might be in either one of those veins. Or because what? It is. The children. If I'd have had more children, that the boys are gone. Right. Although I've had cats all ever since they were small, uh, the cat has become more important to me since the children are grown, and I can't give the affection to them, and have never been able to give to my husband like I have wanted to. I got such a very strong feeling that. You want so much to be loved and appreciated. Mm -hmm. In fact, if somebody gives me a little attention, boy, I'll just, you know, yeah. <laughs> I fall to pieces. It just does wonders for me. It's just like magic words. And I, I beam. I know I do. I react to people that uh, say nice things to me, whether it's just... Uh, you look nice today, you have a nice dress, or your hair looks nice. Even though I see through this, I realize these are little things that we all just say to each other, but still, it turns me on. You'll gladly pick them up even if they're crumbs. Uh-huh. I do. Boy, this is pretty damn pathetic to feel that your cat is the only one that really likes you as you are. Mm -hmm. You don't have to put up any pretense there. Mm -hmm. As far as people are concerned, I, in a sense, like being around people, but I, I only like to go up a certain point. Then from there, I don't like to get too close to people. For example, uh, if I got to know you, Keith, uh, better, at least the way I feel now, then I wouldn't want to get to know you too well. And uh, when you say, well, why do you feel like this? I, I can't say. Maybe it's because I don't. I can't truthfully say it's because I don't want to be bothered. And yet it may be because, as Beth says, that uh, you get up to a certain point and I feel that if you get to know me too well, you'll reject me, I guess. Maybe if he sees too much of me, he'll see these things about me that I don't like and he won't like. And by his not liking it, he just makes it that much clearer to myself. But I don't know where the change comes or how it came, but perhaps I have a little more courage. But I'm not satisfied with these relationships that end just there. I mean, I would like to really have enough love in me to see the person all the way through and see certain things about him that I don't like, but I still like all of him. To have enough love there for these people and to find this love in return for me, that with all my limitations, all my faults, all my shortcomings, that I can be really loved, then I think it would be a fulfilling relationship. I have these in it. After a while, it's, you know, this type of relationship that you say you form. It's just not enough. And in this group, I hope that I can love every one of you and have every one of you love me. I don't know whether I I'll can. I'll tell you what, what it's going to have to happen. I, here's the way I see you. I am, a, I am a beautiful Eurasian girl. And when I talk, a little bell tinkles inside of me. And that's all there is, is just beauty and light and... I think that's lovely. I respond to it uh, as a man and as as another person. But I got to see something else too. I got to. I want you to know that I I'm gonna when I hear that bell tinkling, I'm, I'm probably gonna remind you of something. You're sort of saying you don't buy that as being all of her. I sure it? don't. And it's been showing in your face. Yeah. Well, well, is that annoying? I, when I talk, I can see him. Is that a source of annoyance? It, it's just the same as, uh, I think we each got sort of styles, and they are great styles, some, but I gotta, I, I gotta, you gotta get through mine, I gotta get through yours. Because we don't want to get caught in each other's style. Our way of coping with the world. I think that's her way of coping. Yeah. I, I look at you as a, you're a little China doll. If yeah. I get too close, you're gonna break. break. I just, I, Almost like a child. Uh, like, like I'm I was saying, child, I know I that I can break, but I want to find out what's in there. I don't see myself as a little china doll. I remember one time uh, before I was married, going out with this 
very uh, nice, well-educated, handsome young Frenchman. And he looked at me as a little lotus blossom. And I told him, I don't want to be a goddamn lotus blossom. I'm a real person, you know. Just give me a chance. I mean, I don't know how, but... Do you think we aren't going to give you a chance? I think I will find it here. I think I will have a chance here. I'm sick and tired of being a... Maybe I present myself this way. I don't mean to. I don't want to be a... A goddamn little... China doll ringing a bell. I mean, I want to have something really to say. Do you feel scolded? Excuse me. Do you feel scolded? No, I don't. I mean, how I want very much to. First of all, I didn't even realize I had this mask on. I don't mean until now, but um, not too long ago, I discovered that apparently there was this something I you know, always held out there that kept people away from me. And I went desperately to come out from that. It's not, and I want to be able to open up and, and let you in because how, if you hold me off, you're holding me off from you. Or if you feel this, and I don't want that, but I don't know how to come out, you know, from behind this. This is so much, you know, a part of me. I mean, a very real it's part. It's not something of you can do by yourself. It's something we have to do with you. You can't just say, "Okay, now I'm going to drop the mask." I couldn't do that. You no, and uh, well, maybe that's what I'm looking for. All of a sudden, I'll drop the mask, and you know, and and let the sun come in. Oh, I don't, I don't really know how. But all I know is that I want to. Well, you've done it right now. And you realize very keenly that, that whatever shuts other people away from you, shuts you away from away that from other me. person. And, and you want desperately for that to disappear, that barrier, whatever it is. I, I think... My husband has done a little of this for me. Most of the fellows that I've dated have, you know, looked upon me as a either a lotus blossom. And I don't know, maybe I remind people that I'm Eurasian and I don't realize I'm doing this. But to me, I'm just me. And uh, they treat me as if I'm not quite quite human and and digs marvelous he pinches me on the bottom slaps me and calls me his broad and and i've never had language like that and uh i've never been anybody's broad <laughs> and it's wonderful and i feel very womanly and all along i've just felt like a you know a sterile empty little the doll thing sitting there on the mantelpiece I think you're fine, Rod. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. When I first met you, that I uh, I reacted very negatively to you inside. I thought uh, that you were very um, phony. Um, maybe it was your voice. Uh, maybe it was just your presentation. I don't know. Just I said, goodness, <laughs> goodness me, what is this? But after you began talking and uh, after you, I think in your eyes, I saw this. I didn't get this um, this mask with you. Or maybe I was, I don't know. I just didn't feel after you began expressing yourself and I saw this sincerity and this depth there, I... Uh, I really felt very warm, too, very warm, and I 
uh, to me, the mask wasn't present at all during your your reactions in the group, and I really felt that you that you were being more um, sincere than anyone. No, I th I'm sorry that the term mask got used. I think I used it myself. But it isn't exactly that the mask and the real person is behind. It's sort of a style that's very real, and I'm sure very, very, uh, it works for you very well. But it just isn't everything. I was thinking about the style thing. And I remember talking to uh, a very good friend of mine and he said um, you use your finishing school attitude or style the way a well-developed woman uses her best life so what I feel I lack in a figure I make up for with this style as you said and I think it's very true I would love to be tall and, and voluptuous, and probably if I were, then I would realize it isn't important. And I think that since I've been married, it has become less important. But when I see my husband looking around at girls, and I say, boy, she's got a good figure in my own mind, you know, and then I kind of look down and I go back to my boarding school or finishing school. <laughs> so I think you're very right when you say that. There is a style. I, I did not consciously pick this up, but I just did. And see, if you're sexier, have a little better upbringing, snobbishness. Or if you're sexier, I have a mind, you know. This is one thing that the, this bit about the lotus blossom, I'd much rather say you have someone say, you know, Rosalind, you're pretty bright kid. I would really appreciate that. Because to tell me I look like a lotus blossom doesn't do me any good because I, in all sincerity, there are times when I think I'm pretty. But most of the time I'm not. I look very ugly because I'm not inside pretty. And so to tell me this, it's, you know, just no, I don't care whether anybody believes this or not, but I like you very much, like when I like you very much. And why doesn't it? I believe you. you. I can you. see your eyes. Funny, well, Ross, for the first time I can understand you now. I understood what you were saying then, but I sort of feel that I can listen and hear what you're saying. But no, I can. I, did, I thought we would, we might go through this without getting to know each other. Like I was afraid we might. You're not afraid of that anymore? No, no, I, uh... Think you're gonna make it? I hope I'm gonna make it. I hope so, too. <laughs> I don't know. It's very difficult to communicate, which is one of my problems in truly communicating. And, and I find myself still uh, not a part of this group somehow. There's not too many, I can't think of anybody in this, except for Beth, that really affects me. And she affects me because she seems so much like me. I look at myself with strangeness because I have no friends, for example, and I don't seem to require any friends. Here? Any place. And uh, I really mean friends. I have not one friend. I don't seem to need any. Yet in my own area, I'm fairly well I assume liked, at least I haven't found uh, anything different than that. I don't seem to, and this is a shocking thing because I feel I'm all wrong, that I do need uh, people and yet I don't seem to, at this point, need any of you. You know, I met Charlie Brown. 
I need all the friends I can get. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a marvel how, how you can really feel you don't need people. And I need every one of you. And I don't know how to give to you if you need me. And this bugs me, and I don't care if it sounds like a tinkling bell or what, but I, it really bothers me because I'm very critical and I, I don't want to be this way. And how can I be loved if I don't love? But you're saying you need us because you like us, not the other way around. Yes, I like you, and I want to like you really more than I know how, and I need you to like me. And how can you not need people? Well, as I say, I feel that that's a wrong thing, but I'm trying to be honest uh, at this point, and I don't know if I am honest even in saying it, but it's the way I feel. Not only in this group, but in any area. And it's a mystery because in people seem to need other people. Not seem to, but they do. And yet I can't seem to realize this or, or really feel it, rather, is what I'm saying. And it, it uh, there's a slight uh, feeling that... Uh, at this session, that there's something wrong with this feeling. Is there... You say you have not a single friend. Is there no one you feel close to, or whom you feel you would let come close to you? Well, my, uh, my parents. Outside of my wife, of course, but uh, that's a different relationship. If you mean somebody that I would have to confide in and felt that I just had to do it, uh, that would that be... That you wanted to do it. Big pardon? That you wanted that I wanted to? Rather than... than had to. And I think he's kind of saying, at least the way I understand what she said, if I was desperate, maybe I would go to my parents. But I think Ross is saying, is there anybody you'd like to share yourself with? No. blame him for everything that was wrong in the marriage, but I quit doing that because I realized it wasn't all. He said it was me. Now I blame me. I think it's all my fault now. It changed me on the side of the fence because I can't give the love and the need to give it back to him. That's why I have to give my affection to the cat. And I've told him so, and he knows it. And he still loves me anyway. Which is wonderful. For a long time, I didn't think he did. But I... When I think it over rationally, I think, well, how could he not have loved me and still gone through all the crazy things he has with me? I just keep having the feeling that if you shared with him some of the things you've been just sharing with us, it'll make some kind of a difference. 
friend. I can go to him and talk to him. And tell him, tell him and he listens. But he doesn't pat me on the shoulder. No, it'll be all right. Or, or that's about the most I get. Is that it'll be all right. There's always a logical reason. He's so reasonable for everything. If he just once show me an emotion, I've never seen him cry. Sometimes I don't think he has any emotion. Without knowing it, she must be talking to you, Jerry. Oh, I'm pretty choked up. I wouldn't be able to say much. <clears throat> I think it's wonderful that we can all sit and feel each other's problems and cry with one another. What I have never had at home. All that I was the, the first time since we've been together that I've really cried right with someone. When others were crying in the group, I felt for them, but not right now. I don't know why, but I really... <clears throat> I guess that's why I feel like, well, now I don't want to go because I have the rapport of all you people, you know. It's comfortable. We can talk to each other about the way we feel now. Well, like my sister, she's the only relative I have in the world, and yet we are miles apart. We do not discuss our inmost feelings to each other at all. But right now, you've got Carly <laughs> weeping inside with you, you've got Jerry weeping with you. I want you to know, Jerry, that even if we can't talk, I'm feeling very much with you. And then 
that it wasn't true, and I told you about it. And it is true. And it... It's so good that it makes you weep. talking early on that my wife might say the same thing sitting where you are. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to figure out why she'd say it. You know, I, I, I'm trying to sit in your husband's shoes and say, no, no, what, what do I do? It might make my wife sit there and act like that. I don't know, I can't swear, but it, I, she could say some of the same things. Perhaps I, uh, I do give her a little pat on the shoulder. And maybe she's just busting something, you know? And, and, uh, one thing I thought was, you know, maybe I'm, uh, just a little bit scared to go too far. Maybe I need a little bit of encouragement. What would encourage you if your wife felt this way? Would you pat her on the back and say it's all going to come out right? I, 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 I don't know. Uh, Keith, what could she say that would it would make it possible for you to talk? I don't know. If you had only one sentence to say to her, what would it be? I think it would be, I'm afraid. Can you go on? I'm afraid. Finish the sentence. Uh... You, I'm afraid of something? Suppose you were talking to your wife. I'm afraid of... I'm afraid of the things I don't know. And you? Oh, I don't think necessarily in, in me or in my wife. No. And in the world. Tears Oh, I was just, uh, just kind of boiling inside and I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. 